Hello everyone, welcome back. KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts. It's a beautiful March Saturday afternoon outside, not a cloud in the sky. Here I am trapped in this room again making videos, but it's been a, a hectic couple months working, had some stuff go on, and um, you know, got my head straight, so uh, let's get some videos going. And this right here is the topic of the video today. This is something I picked up in the last, uh, about a month and a half. This is the new ICOM ID52 digital handheld from ICOM. The first time I played with this was with Ray Novak at Alabama uh, Huntsville Ham Fest. And uh, if you're not familiar, when this came out, um, at, shortly after it came out in Japan, then they had a shortage on semiconductor parts due to some fires in Japan uh, overseas with uh, some manufacturing plants. And they couldn't source the parts, so they had to cease production for a moment for a few months until they got you know the sources correct and or uh, you know relinquished with different uh, engineering practices or whatever and then they started releasing it again so this is after all that uh, right about Orlando Hamfest time is when they came out and I ended up purchasing one I sold my Kenwood D74 that I bought in November you see a video or two on that uh, that was a cool radio and I paid a lot for it but um, I had to let it go for this and I, I <laughs> That's just how it works, man. You get one, you get bored, you get another one. I knew this was coming out for a while. I wanted it. And I want to show you first in this video a quick look about this on why. Because there are people out there that, you know, make videos also or comments, and that's what I hear. Great. Another handheld. Yay. Too expensive. I'll pass. Well, there's a lot of features I like about this and a lot of reasons that I sold the D74 for this. And I'm an ICOM guy, so I like this. If you're not familiar... The previous model to this was the ID51. They had ID51, 50th anniversary, which is the one I had, the lime green one, years ago, seven or eight years ago, great handheld. Then they had the uh, 51A, 51A plus two, and this now, all kinds of colors. And um, that was a great handheld. I haven't had one for a while, but when I had that, hotspots and repeaters in my area, or hotspots didn't exist just yet, and um, uh, repeaters in my area were non-existent, so I sold it, but it was fun. Now D-Star is just where I'm constantly at. So this brings more than just D-Star. You know, you could do stuff like picture messaging, uh, Bluetooth from your phone to send pictures over D-Star while you're talking to somebody, text messaging while you're talking to somebody, uh, mobile app so you can control the thing and find repeaters on a map and set the radio without having to, it's got a lot of cool stuff. I'm gonna show you right now in a quick look, and I wanna thank you to Ham Radio Prep, my sponsors, for helping me out in making videos like this. Uh, Ham Radio Prep is still getting tens of thousands of people that are getting their license, and it's better than just memorizing answers and doing a practice test over and over. They got interactive videos, quizzes, some brain games to make you retain some of the information on what you're learning and show you why you're calling CQ and how to make your first contact. It's on hamradioprep.com. Use the code ERIC20. You'll save 20% on anything you buy. And stay tuned to the video that I'm coming up with with the new American Radio Club, which is just made by Ham Radio Prep. There's got so much stuff. When you get your license, now what? American Radio Club is going to be what? So we'll show you that soon. Let's check out the new ID52. Quick like, then we'll get some other videos after this on Ham Radio Concepts. So the ID52 handheld, dual band, VHF and UHF, analog and digital, Dual simultaneous receive, analog and digital, D-Star. So you can listen to VHF on the top, UHF on the bottom. VHF, VHF, or UHF, UHF, or digital, digital on VHF, or digital, digital on VHF, UHF. You get the idea. Five watts, IPX7 rated, which means this can uh, withstand three feet of water for 30 minutes. That's the IPX7 rating. Ingress, protection, X is not uh, tested against solid objects, and seven means it can go three feet in water or one meter for 30 minutes. So as I asked Will Jourdain in Ham Radio Outlet, I can use it in the bathtub. It's not recommended, but I can. Or I could go out and do the rest of my re review videos in the pool on the raft and not be afraid if I drop it. This radio right here was what I hoped for. I asked Will Jourdain, I tested it myself. It is a lot louder. It's 750 milliwatts with a new speaker design and new waterproofing design to prevent the speaker from being covered up by the waterproofing. It is much louder. If you turn this thing all the way up, you will hear it outside. That was my biggest complaint with the ID51 and the variants of that 51A plus two and stuff like that 
was because I want to be able to hear this thing. If I'm driving down the road or if I'm at hand fest with it on my belt clip and I want to hear it, I got to be able to hear it. So um, a great color display on here. And you may notice it's got a full color waterfall display. Now that is good. You may ask, okay, I'm familiar with a waterfall on a, DC, on a uh, ICOM 705 or 7300. What would I use that for on here? Well, you would never really realize that you can find a lot of stations that are talking on simplex or a lot of other repeaters you didn't know were there because of watching the waterfall. It's kind of like a waterfall on a 7300. You know, you find, you know, scope heads. Scope heads would love this. You can find uh, frequencies that are in use and, you know, identify them and then uh, scroll to that frequency if you want it. Now, I don't run the scope all the time because I like seeing some other stuff. We'll get in that in a minute. Um, the way that ICOM lays this out is great. They have uh, some of the same buttons and style on the front as the 51. You know, if you want to get the DR mode, it's on the front. If you want to go to the quick menu, it's on the front. The menu, if you want to use uh, VFO or memory mode, main and dual watch, main F VFO, you know, uh, sub VFO and more. Uh, call sign history and receive call signs and stuff like that. It's very similar to that. And uh, on the left side here, you have the PTT button, your squelch button. So, you know, you could, it's like a monitor squelch button. Uh, power button and your micro SD. Micro SD is good for saving the repeater database, saving memories, uh, saving pictures, um, saving audio, recorded audio that you can do on this. If you're working satellites with this, picture this. You could record your transmit audio to the satellite and the receive audio from the satellite onto the SD card, kind of like the 9700 does. Um, no satellite mode in this, but you can use it to just record a regular D-Star contact or a regular simplex contact on FM. It's there and some other stuff, okay? On this side, you have uh, the mic, speaker mic here and the micro USB and power. A lot of people complain about the micro SP, USB, why? If you don't have 16,000 micro USB cords from the last 10 years, why would you want something on there that you have to start investing? It's, it's micro USB, man. So with this being IPX7 capable, okay, um, you want to keep these things closed, these rubbers, right? Keep them closed because if you drop it in the water, most of the time, that's where the water will get in, not through the speaker or through the battery thing, but through here. And, uh, you know, volume and channel select up here, all right? So the antenna on the top uses an SMA female on the radio, SMA male on the antenna, okay? And, and I'm saying that by the pin, not what's sticking out of the radio. That is actually a female. This is actually male because the pin's inside here. And what I can say about the stock antenna and the, the radio so far is... It has actually a really good sensitivity and transmit range because I could sit in my room with the stock antenna and get on a local D-Star repeater. I can't say that with a couple of the radios I've had around here uh, in this new house in the last year. So that's pretty cool. Um, it, 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 it has, a, I want to say, when I'm driving down the road um, testing UHF repeaters, not on hand bands but on work, it had a better result than my R-Finder B1 that I sold. Yes, I sold my R-Finder B1 smartphone with the DMR radio in it. This thing uh, has is, is way beyond that as far as transmit range and receive sensitivity. Uh, if that is a good comparison, I'm not sure because they're two different types of devices. But that was my main carry for a couple of years now was an R-Finder. I'm glad this is my main carry now. This has a lot better performance. Although the R-Finder was way louder than this thing, um, I don't need it to be that loud, you know? But this is much louder than the ID51 and the ID31 and stuff like that. So here's another good thing that uh, ICOM does. I'm going to show you the menu for a second. Now, again, th this menu structure is more of a graphical icon set, okay? And uh, the 51, you know, had a list. But when you look in this radio, every menu item and the structure that they do resembles everything you would find on my 7100, on my 5100 I had, on my 51, on my, uh, uh, you know, a lot of features that you're familiar with. So I have not opened the manual yet, and I intend to do some more in-depth 
on some of the features I'm not familiar with, like access point, and terminal mode, and stuff like that. But the menu structure is almost identical to all the other radios that have D-Star with this capability in it, like the radios I just mentioned. That is a big plus. That is. When I got this radio, it only took me a few minutes to get the repeater database loaded through the MS uh, ICOM MS1 RA app, whatever it is. I'll show you that in another video. That app on my phone, on my Android phone, because I have it on Android and Apple, allowed me real quick to load the entire repeater database from the internet within five seconds right to the device. So do I need that RT Systems cable? No, I don't. Um, the whole database is in here. It's even got features in here. Let's go, let me show you this for a second. Okay, like you're familiar, near repeater, repeater list, or repeater search. By the GPS that's in here, I could choose. Do I want digital, FM, or all of them? And if I hit OK, it's going to use GPS and load the nearest repeaters to my area. Okay, um, here they are here. And all you do is just tap on the OK button. There it is. It sets it. Now I can go on the top here and choose, do I want a gateway call, a CQ call, you know, a, a, a local call, um, reflector, you know, stuff like that. All the features are very reminiscent of older or previous model and existing model radios now. That's why I like it. So comes with your antenna, comes with your little wrist strap here, comes with the belt clip. The belt clip just snaps on and off. You don't have to do those silly screws in the back. The battery that is in here, let me turn this off. And the battery life, how's the battery life look? Okay, glad you asked. And with the waterproofing, it does have a nice solid feel, you know, tight feel in the back. This is the BP272 1880 milliamp hour battery. They do have additional batteries that are higher capacity. Um, this battery for what I used it for, not constantly transmitting all the time, but this radio uh, lasted me several days of use, uh, not consistent use. I didn't have to charge this thing every single day, okay? Um, but I've only charged it since I've had it like three or four times, four or five times. So the battery is, I can't give you an accurate, you know, I'm gonna key every 15 seconds, receiver 15 seconds, you know, four times a minute, uh, you know. Listen, I've used a lot of radios in my day and I know that the, uh, 52 here now I mean the R Finder B1 that I had which is not compared to this at all that was my last radio I've had for a couple years that thing would last days but this you'll be hard-pressed to use this radio and have to charge it in a couple hours what I can tell you is that the D74 I had was a battery hog that thing you'd be lucky to make it a complete day with that radio but there's a lot of stuff going on in that radio so you get the idea nice solid tight clip with the battery on there and um Nice color screen on the front. All right, this is a cool radio. Uh, I'll give you a couple more words of what I'm uh, thinking about as far as why I purchased this radio, okay, why I wanted it. And then the next videos, and you can leave a comment below, the next videos I'm gonna show you about the picture messaging from here to another radio. I used my 705 as a test, but you can do it to anybody that's got a radio capable on D-Star to send and receive pictures such as 52, the 51, if you use that special cable the 51 needed to the app, this does it over Bluetooth. So if you have a tablet, a smartphone, you can be sending pictures in moments. No need to get that $70 cable like I did on the 51. Um, but the 705, the 9700, the 51 with the cable, a 52, and uh, whatever else. Uh, oh, and the 5100 over Bluetooth to the app. I did send pictures of my 5100. Although they don't come on the screen when you have the radios with the monochrome. Like this one, I'll show you in a video. Picture mode. You can watch, send and receive and watch it happen as you're talking. The digital DV fast data, with your voice, it encodes the picture. And as you're transmitting, you're talking, you're watching the screen build. I think that's great for stuff like Skyborn. Stuff like, uh, you know, uh, um, weather events, uh, hurricane, uh, wherever you're at, blogging, whatever. I mean, think about it. You can send pictures if you're out and about. Wow, you take a picture with your phone, you, you go on here, you Bluetooth it through the app to here, and you send it over a reflector hotspot or repeater to somebody that may want to see. And the, video, the pictures on here are quite impressive for the quality 
over a radio. And you may say, well, I could text message a picture from my iPhone. Can you do it over a repeater or over a hotspot? Can you do it over a radio? Can you do it to your buddy in the field in search and rescue to show where you're at? No, you can't if you don't have cell phone service. When all else fails, ham radio's there, right? That's the kind of stuff I like. I don't think it's always an emergency for picture messaging on here, but it could be fun at the same time. So a couple other reasons why I wanted this, okay? First off, the Bluetooth functionality is, is very useful on radio these days. My work vehicle, we have some new stipulations when I'm driving that I can't really be going like this, the radio, as I'm driving. But this with Bluetooth, I can link to my Ford Sync uh, Bluetooth and keep this out of sight and use my Bluetooth to listen and to talk on. You can use it with uh, third party Plantronics or Jabra whatevers or the Icon Bluetooth uh, headset thing that they have or like I said, on my truck it does work. I'm not sure if it'll work on everybody's truck, but it will. Um, another thing, the screen on this, this, this color screen, okay, it, it does not wash out in the sun, meaning I can look at this in complete sunlight beaming on my radio and I can see everything. Who wants to... Yeah, I've done this before. Look, I think I'm on the right frequency. No, you, no, not with the screen. I'm not sure of the exactly, uh, exactly of the technology of this is. I mean, it's not touchscreen. I don't want touchscreen on a radio. I don't need it. Um, but I'm not sure of the technology of the screen for technical purposes. But it's a very robust color uh, display here where it doesn't have any large pixels. I mean, it's a nice color screen, and you can see it in sunlight so that's pretty cool to reference this i picked this up when i saw it uh, at hro and i'll play with it there again so the specifications for the usa version transmit 144 to 148 430 to 450 in the amateur bands now again gigaparts did mod this for me for free for the mars cat mod because i use it for work and gmrs so this will do uh, 136 to 174 transmit on VHF and probably um, four, uh, 420 to 450 or 470. On, well, let's see. Will it go up to 500? Let's see. Never, never really done that. I mean, here's 458. So let's see. Uh, let's see if I can go to uh, the band select here. We'll go way up in the uh, up here. Let's see. Let's try. 478 off band. Let's try four. Okay, 480. All right, so we're up to 480. So if you're interested in using this for that, now the receiver on VFO A will do 108 to 174, and you can listen to AM airband receive. So that's a plus two FM radio broadcast, and then AM airband receive. Sometimes I like to listen to some planes, and um, 225 to 479 receive for. Um, you yeah, know, there's some, some military in there in the 300s. I'm not sure what's in there, but um, you won't be able to listen to 220 because it's not in there. And then on VFOB, 137 to 174 received, 375 to 479. So uh, it does have some additional receive capabilities for people who are listening to AM Airband. Uh, it will do DV, or digital, FM, FM narrow, FM wide, AM, AM narrow, and uh, wide FM, AM, and AM narrow are receive only, okay? The optional accessories, look at this. So some of the batteries here, they have quite a bit of additional accessories on this, okay? And I'm not, I mean, I, I, I do get some accessories. I'm not in the market for one right now. But this is the, uh, like I said, the BP272 battery, which is 1880 milliamp. But you can't go up to the BP307 3,050 milliamp, or everybody always asks, does it have a BP273 for the AA battery pack? Yes, it does. The uh, AA battery pack, for those who want to use it in emergencies when you can't charge your batteries, they do have the accessory for that. So five watts, as I said, um, and uh, the rest is history because I, I kind of like, you know, this, this, it's a great way to introduce a radio. I mean, it kind of looks busy. It looks busy. It looks like it's capable. I like that. And, um, we're going to show you more about what this thing will do on the next video. So thank you for watching. Thank you, everybody, for um, being there to support me when I had to put my little buddy down a couple weeks ago, live stream. That was a freak out moment. Uh, it was something that probably didn't need to be on YouTube, but uh, it's more than just a video thing for me, guys. You guys are friends and family. 
and uh, needed somebody to cry on her shoulder other than my wife. So I appreciate that. And uh, we're good now. It's in a better place getting to it. And uh, hopefully work slows down in the next couple of weeks. I can really start cranking some videos out. So uh, with that being said, 7-3, everybody. This is KJ4 YZI.